Uh, in the second part of this course, I will introduce how to perform DCM analysis using SPM12. And uh, um, the most of the content in this section is actually uh, following the uh, SPM12 manual, specifically for the chapter 13.5, introducing the DCM. So if you want to see the detailed guidance or detailed instruction, you can just uh, uh, see the SPM12 manual in. And uh, for the materials that are provided today, I actually include the SPM12 manual inside. So you can just find a, a PDF file that's named as the SPM12 manual. Just, uh, just try to find the chapter 35. Okay. And uh, uh, we see the uh, FMI analysis 12 underlying materials zip file that I provided to you today. You can see um, not only the SPM12 menu, but also there is a subfolder named as the at attention. As I say that this attention data set is uh, actually provided by the SPM team, uh, which is uh, based on the publication in the cerebral cortex in 1997. So you can see this data set is pretty old right there. So you can see some parameters, for example, the TR is pretty long. However, this is the, uh, the classical data set that normally we will uh, introduce you to use for the DCM analysis. So first of all, I'd like to uh, introduce the structure of this data set. So we see in this attention uh, subfolders right here, you can see there is one functional subfolder, and there is one structural subfolder. So you can try to, so you can see uh, they are actually uh, stored in the Analyze 75 format right here. So you will have a pair of files. For example, for this 0033 right here, you will have a HDR file and uh, an IMG file right here. So this is a pair for one, one uh, FMI file right here, okay. So you can use the micro to feel what the data looks like. For example, this one. So actually, this is the preprocessed uh, image data set that SPM provided to you. Okay. So you can see uh, they have 720 files. That means uh, the image file actually includes 360 different time points right here. And for another uh, subfolder named the structure right here, this is actually the normalized uh, T1 weighted imaging. So you can again use the micro to see. This is these subjects normalize the T1 weighted image right here. Okay, this one. So you can see right here. Okay, and uh, uh, beyond these two subfolders, you can also uh, see there are several different meta files right here. This one factors uh, actually. Uh, store the, the onset time for different uh, tasks. I will introduce it later. Okay, so let's come back to here. So during the uh, F FMI data acquisition, uh, the authors actually delivered four different conditions to the subject. And uh, this is actually the single subject data, okay? So for each subject, uh, we see in the FMI scanner, the authors actually uh, display some visual stimuli on the screen. For example, if the authors display the one single dot, one single dot in the middle of the screen, then we will say this is kind of the uh, fixation condition without any other dots, only one single dot in the middle of the screen. This is a fixation condition. And then you may see this kind of the stimuli on the screen this is called a static or using the capital S to re represent this kind of condition. This is static, multiple dots on the screen, however, non moving dots. So just look like this one. You have uh, see plenty of dots on the screen in a random arrangement, but they are not moving. Okay. And then you can see another condition is uh, called no attention condition with the capital N to re represent this condition. However, in this kind of condition, the dots are actually moving in a, uh, different directions. However, there is no attention required. That means they also didn't ask a subject to pay attention on this kind of the moving dots. Okay, so they say this kind of the condition is the capital N right here. And the final one is the attention condition. That is, the dots are actually moving, 
And also the participant is asked to pay attention on these moving dots. So now you have four different conditions, capital F for fixation, capital S, capital N, and capital A right here. Why they, or why they deliver these four different conditions to the subjects? Because they try, they, are, they try to uh, evaluate the effects from the, for example, motion. What kind of the uh, modula modulatory effects on the effective connectivity can be measured if the subject is looking at the moving dots? What kind of the uh, effects on the effective connectivity can be measured if the subject is asked to pay attention on this kind of move moving dots? So you have different kind of the um, uh, condition behind this. So we can actually recombine all the four conditions into three different conditions. The first one we say uh, photic. Photic means uh, you display some, uh, some uh, dots on the screen. However, uh, we didn't care about whether the dot is moving, the dots are moving, or whether the subject is uh, required to pay attention on this. So in this kind of a condition, you can see it's actually involved all three different conditions, that static, static uh, dots displayed on the screen, or moving dots without requirement for the attention, and moving dot with requirement of the attention. So you can see all, the, all these three conditions will combine to be uh, photic, photic condition right here. And for the motion condition, you can say now only capital N, that means moving dots without attention, and moving dots with attention are included in this kind of the condition. This is called the motion. So the main effect is that compared to the static, the dots are moving. Okay. The final one is attention whether the subject is asked to pay attention on the uh, moving dots right there. So only capital A condition right here is included in, in this kind of condition. And now what you should uh, also know is the onset for uh, different condition right there. For example, for the uh, capital S, the static one, the onset is actually for four different blocks right here. So the unit is in scan is in scan or in fallen right there. Okay, and uh, as I mentioned that this kind of the onset information is uh, stored in the factors domain file right here. So if you really want to see that, what you can do is just drag the factors domain into the manable workspace right here. Then you can see there are three different variables right here. Static, the onset time for the static condition, the onset time for the moving dot without attention. None, atten no attention right here is this one. And uh, for the attention condition right here is this one. I just uh, copy the values uh, uh, into the slide so you can easily, you can easily copy these values into the SPN environment, okay. And uh, the block, this is the uh, block design and for each onset, they will follow by a block duration for 10 scans right here or we say 10 TRs right here. And a TR right now is 3.22 seconds. As I mentioned, this is a uh, uh, all the paper right there, so the parameters is actually for TR is pretty long right here. And overall, you have 360 scans on hand uh, within the functional subfolders right here. Okay, so what we are going to do is, first of all, as I mentioned before, you need to have the hypothesis behind the DCM model. So what you are going to do, of course, this is not my hypothesis. This is based on what also mentioned in their paper, they try to um, at least uh, compare these two different models. We are not going to compare 10 different models. We try to make things simple and succinct. So in this course, we are going to only compare these two different models right here. So again, we focus on three different regions that, that may correlate to the uh, visual motion test or visual perception. So for, for the very first one is V1, primary visual a cortex. This is definitely the primary region for the uh, visual sensation. And the V5 is a higher level or the specified uh, visual cortex that uh, take care of the motion related information. So this is the V5 right here. And the SPC, superior parietal cortex, we say this is the parietal region uh, that take the response to the visual perception and the uh, motion 
or the visual spatial information right there. So this is the uh, superior part of cortex. We now focus on these three different brain regions. However, what kind of the modulatory effect from the attention can affect this kind of model? So they have two different uh, assumption, assumptions right there. The first one they called Bayward connection. That means the attention will modulate the backward backward uh, connectivity from SPC to V5 right here. This is the backward connection from SPC to V5. However, they have another model called forward connection modulation. That means the attention will modulate the effect connectivity from V1 to V5. We say this is kind of the forward connection because this is the primary visual cortex. This is a higher level or space of the visual cortex. So this is from the original point to the next step. So we say this is a forward connection. However, this kind of the higher level back to the V5, we say this is a back, backward connection. Okay. So you can see right here, the only difference between these two different models is the modulatory effect from the attention, whether on this one or whether on this one. This is a, a basic hypothesis or basic assumption that we would like to use a DCM to confirm whether uh, which model, uh, whether this one is right or this one is the correct one. So in, in this slide, I try to list uh, the practical or the key steps for the DCM analysis. So very first one, uh, if you have the general idea of the model design, now, first of all, you need to um, uh, seek an explanation for the GLM result. What does this mean? That means you will, first of all, employ the GLM analysis. GLM analysis basically will give you the general idea where is the brain activation, maybe related to the photics or maybe related to the emotion or related to the attention. So you will, you will use the GLM to figure out where is the brain region. For example, we know V1 may be the target, but where is the V1? You can use the GLM analysis to, to find where is the voxels or the clusters that has a, a high beta value or a, a high T value that can actually uh, pinpoint the V1 location. So very first step, uh, you won't uh, manually define the ROI. You will use GLM result as the uh, ROI of region. Okay. And then you will uh, specify the design matrix. Design matrix is also what we use in GLM. However, the design matrix right now is not actually used for GLM, it's used for DCM. For example, if we want to see what kind of the modulatory event, uh, effect uh, can be uh, caused by the attention, we need to tell the model when attention will happen. For example, what kind of the blocks are actually delivered for the attention uh, task? Which blocks that participant uh, is actually asked to pay attention on the moving dots? So you need to give this kind of the design matrix to the DCM. So they can actually use this kind of design matrix to predict the potential uh, facial response or the both signals right there. And then after this uh, GLM results and after you have the design matrix on hand, you can now extract the time series from the region of the interest. In this case, V1, V5, and SPC, okay. And then you need to specify the model ar architecture. That means you need to spec specify these two different models into DCM, okay. And then after the specification, you can estimate the model. Okay, so in this step, uh, you may need to repeat these two different uh, two points uh, sequentially. Depends on how many models you'd like to test. In our case, we only want to test two different models. So now you only need to repeat this iteration for two times. Okay, so first time I will specify the backward connection model and then estimate this backward connection model. Then. I will create or specify the forward connection model and again estimate this forward connection model. So repeat these two points depends on how many models you don't want to try. Sometimes two, sometimes 16 models, sometimes even more. So it depends on your hypothesis. So the more information or the more prior knowledge you have on hand, then the model number or model size should be reduced. So you will, uh, you will find out that you can perform DCM in much easier or much simpler way. Okay. 
And then if you have several different models on hand, now you will perform the Bayesian model selection right here. Basically, Bayesian model selection will determine which model is the optimal one. Depends on so-called model fitness and uh, model complexity. If you have some idea about the uh, model generation or even the machine learning, you will find out that sometimes we don't want model to be too complex because too complex model may easily cause so-called overfitting. Okay, so I may take this figure as an example. <coughs> right here, there are two axes. The horizontal axis represents the model complexity right here. And the vertical axis right here uh, means the model fit right here, or model fitness right here. And now we may have the data on hand. For example, we may have these several dots on hand. This is a sample data you'd like to uh, fit using maybe an equation or an equation or maybe using a curve or something. So right here you can see with the increment of the horizontal axis, that means you are increasing the model complexity. Of course, you can see right here, if you use a, a model that is too simple, for example, you only use a, a linear equation with just, just a, a straight line right here, then you may find out that this kind of the, uh, data cannot be fit pretty well right here. That means you didn't give a sufficient uh, model complexity right here. And now, when you go to this point, that means you have the highest model complexity right here. You can see, wow, this kind of the curve can actually go through every single sample data point right here. However, what you are actually fit, uh, fit to is the noise. Because the general sample data may be uh, better fit with this kind of a model. This model may have a better uh, generalization. That means I really uh, ignore the noise. Noise means you may measure data, however, if you have the noise interference, the data may not uh, locate at the exact point that it may, they, they should have. So definitely you don't want to use this kind of a high complexity model to fit for the noise. You may want to have this kind of the for example, this kind of the uh, curve. So you can have the general idea about how this kind of a, a data is distributed with. So you can see, uh, you may have some kind of a trade-off. You don't want too simple model or too complex model. You want to find a, a good point right here, a good balance point right here. Another issue is that normally if you have a too simple data, you will have a poor fitness right here. However, with the increment of the complexity, you definitely can have a good fitness. However, it's a good fitness for the noise, not for the data per se. So you need to, again, find out a good balance point right here. So in this case, this point may be a better one. You have a, a balanced model complexity, but good enough model fitness. Okay, this is a point you'd like to see. So actually, uh, the Bayesian model selection is trying to find the balance between the model fitness and the model complexity right here. Okay, so this is what uh, so-called model compression or model selection step is going to do. Finally, once you have the recommended or you have the optimal model on hand, now what you can do is review the result. You can now review what is the optimal model uh, uh, tells you. For example, what is the effective connectivity between V1 and V5? What kind of the modulatory effects can be caused by the attention or even the motion? Okay, so you can, based on the optimal model to uh, review your results right here, or even make the inference that whether attention can really cause the effective connectivity changes between V1 to V5. Okay, so let's start the processing step by step. So very first one, you need to construct. You need to construct the uh, the model for the GLM. We say the first level model because now we only have the uh, single subject data on hand. So now we are going to specify the model for this point and this point because during the model specification we will also have the design matrix on hand. Okay. So this is the very first step. Model specification and estimation. So what you are going to do right now, please go to the SPM environment. Again, you need to make sure that you include the SPM 12. Do I have? I should have this. Yeah. Ensure that you have SPM 12 uh, within the MATLAB uh, path right here. And now you can 
just key in the FM ISBN with a space FMR right here. And before you do so, just remember to switch your current folder into the attention subfolder. Okay, it will definitely help you to make the file selection. Okay, so now what you should do is you can uh, click the specify first level. So you can see there are the uh, all the all the parameters that you should specify. Uh, so right now you need to specify a directory that you will in you will export all the results from the uh, GLM. And you may you may find that actually there is another GLM subfolder under the uh, data folder I provide to you. This is the one that I actually finish all the process. So please do not over um, overwrite this folder. Just try to create another one for yourself. So maybe you can create another folder called GLM2 or something. Fall behind, you cannot follow my path. You can just use GLM to see the DCM result, okay? So create another one, okay, right here. So you can select uh, the uh, GLM right here, okay? And for the following uh, parameters, you, you can uh, see very similar setup. For example, you use the scans, the scan interval is the TR 3.22 right now. And now the data and design, you will see now you will have a single subject and the scans should be functions. You can select all. Oh, you have 360 functions right here, right? And the conditions now, we have three different conditions. We combine the condition. We have photic, we have motion, we have uh, attention. And I know you cannot follow my speed, so to be very honest, you can just load another file. You can see right here, I actually provide you this page editor, uh, this page file right here. You can try to directly use, let's do this. You can just load. There is a model underlying specification, underlying estimation, underlying page that made file right here. This is the one that I created for you. You can directly uh, just load this page file right here. So you can see this actually includes three different modules. The first one is the one that we just did. However, I finished all the condition specification right here for you. So you don't really need to key in by yourself. However, please ensure that you know how to specify all the parameters for each step right here. Okay, so what we did is uh, uh, above right here. But for the condition, first one is the photic. Okay, so you have the specific onset time right here. The duration is 10, and the second condition is the motion. Again, you can see this is the, uh, these are the onset times right here. Duration again is a 10 for each block. Then attention, onset times, and the durations right here. Okay, you don't really need to um, actually key in the multiple ratios for especially extracted from the realignment because the authors didn't provide the uh, realignment files for you. So you cannot do this right now. However, if you, you are using your data, you can definitely put, put the realignment uh, text file right here, the multiple regressors, okay? But for now, you don't need to do anything. So I may remind you that you need to change two different uh, parameters right here. The first one is the uh, output directory. Okay. And the second thing is the uh, is this one, the scans. Origi originally, I selected 360 files for you. However, again, this is the pathway on my computer. So what you need to do is to re just unselect all, okay? And now you'd like to, okay. So select all. Again, you have 360 files right here. Okay, so you need to uh, re-specify these two different things, output directory and the scans right here. And you can see there are uh, uh, two different modules right here. The second one is a mod, uh, model estimation. Okay, this is actually the function of this button, estimate. Okay, so this is not a big deal. What you need to do is when you need to select the spn.mat file, you will use the dependency. You will use the SPM, SPM file that you just created from the first module. Okay, so right here, I already set up this dependency for you. So you don't really need to uh, do the dependency again. You can see there is no uh, left arrow with uh, capital X right here. There is DEP, that means I already assigned the dependency uh, right here for you. 
And the third one is the contrast manager. If you may recall, once we finished the model estimation, we can create a contrast. And right now, I also create a contrast for you. But we may take a look right here. The first one is the select SPN.meta file. Again, you can use the dependency. But now we will use the estimated SPN model as the input for this contrast manager. So you can see the dependency right here is the originated from the originated from the model estimation step right here. And for the contrast session, uh, we created four different contrasts. The first one is the F contrast. That is actually uh, we call it a, an I matrix right here. That you only have the one value for the diagonal turns right here. So you have three different conditions, and then these uh, three different values on the uh, diagonal turn means you only consider uh, each of the each of the uh, conditions right here. And then for T contrast with the name of the photic means you have the uh, contrast design T contrast design as the one zero zero. That means I only want to see the first first contrast. Okay. And the second T contrast is the motion right here. You can see again the contrast factor right here is zero one zero because the second con second condition is the, for the motion. Okay. And the final one, T contrast, is the attention. You can see the uh, contrast factor right here is zero, zero, 001. We only focus on the attention condition right here. OK. So once you uh, make sure that uh, all the parameters are uh, set up correctly, what you can do now is click the, the round edge button. OK. OK, now just wait. It won't take too long. Just a couple seconds, I think. Just wait. And now you can see this is the uh, design matrix right here. So you can see for the first category, that is the uh, photics. That means only. Uh, that means if the subjects can see the dots, plenty of dots on the screen, then that is uh, that are included in this kind of the uh, photics uh, task. So you can see plenty different uh, dots right here. But only the dots are moving. The condition with the dots moving on the screen will be considered as the motion conditions right here. So you can see the block will decrease in this column compared to the first column. And the final one is the attention. Only the moving dots with the requirement for subject's attention on this, then it will be considered as the attention uh, conditions right here. So lesser, lesser blocks right, right here are included for these things. Okay, so you can see uh, in a very short time the uh, the SPN complete uh, all the model specification estimation and the uh, contrast uh, manage management. Okay, so right now what we can do is what we can do is go to the next step. Now we can try to extract the time series for V1, V5, and the SPC. Okay. How can you do so? You need to uh, use the result review button of the of the uh, SPM. So what you are going to do right now is now again go to the SPM menu right here. Now we will click the uh, results button right here. Okay. So now you need to uh, specify specify a, GIS, uh, a SPM file right here. So now I'd like to select the one that I just created, the desktop one. No, not this one. Desktop, OK, this one. This is the, the output directory that, that I just set up. OK. So now you can see you have uh, four different contrasts that we just created. Now I may use, because I want to see the V1. V1 is the primary visual cortex that will receive all the visual sensations. So I will use the photic. Photic as the, uh, the the contrast. Okay. Now it will ask whether you'd like to apply the mask. You can uh, take the slide as a reference. I will give you some hint that for V1, you just pick the photic a photic contrast, and without any applying uh, without applying any mask right there. So just click none. Okay. And the p value uh, because in this in this case. I didn't want to really use the GM result as the uh, inference, but I'd like to use the result from the GM as the um, ROI or VOI. Sometimes they say factor of interest, VOI creation. So I don't really need to drive the p value too restrictively. So what I'm going to do just use no, 
no multiple comparison correction, okay? And the p-value as the 0 0.001, that's okay. And the factor size, I may leave zero right here. I don't really need to set uh, 20 or 30. Okay, just use zero right here. Okay, so now you can see uh, they have plenty of regions uh, outside the visual cortex, but that, that is not what I want. I may focus on the uh, greatest, greatest activation right here. So maybe around this place, okay? And you may try to switch this uh, red arrow right here to, to find out the correct region. You may consider the high activation region as well as the anatomical region for the V1. So you need to consider both things, not only the high activation, but also the anatomical location of the V1. So here is the recommendation for you. If you want to locate the V1, 0, minus 9, 3, and 18 is the recommended, re recommend, recommended uh, coordinate for you. So what you can do right here is you can uh, see this kind of the panel on the SPN. There is a chance that you can input the assigned coordinate to the SPN. So what you're going to do is key in these three, uh, three values right here, 0, minus 93, and 18 right here. So now 0, minus 93, and 18 right here. Okay, you can see now the arrow uh, point to this point. You have to know that the primary visual cortex is mostly located in the medial part of the visual cortex. You can see this is very close to the medial part, okay? Once you select the, uh, the satisfied of the, 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 the region that you, you want to extract the bird signal, now you can click this button, eigenvariant button right here, okay? Or maybe larger, uh, larger text right here, eigenvariant right here. Okay, so click on this one. And now you have the chance to rename your uh, VOI or ROI. Now I will put V1 right here. Okay, so this VOI is for V1. And now it may ask you whether you want to adjust your data. We will pick the final one. Effects of interest is actually the F contrast that assign the diagonal value as one. So this pick this one as the adjust data can help you to adjust the mean value of the signal. So you can pick this one, effects of interest, okay. And then normally we use the severe to define the uh, VOI, okay. Now the uh, severe radius, I may recommend you to use eight millimeter or six millimeter, depends on your, your condition. Okay, so for now we use eight millimeter severe radius as the example. So now you can see, you now have this kind of figure pop out on the SPM figure, just what I displayed on the uh, slide. So this indicate uh, the demonstrative uh, figure right here showing you the general location of the V1. And the uh, this is actually the, not the average bullet signal, this is actually the First, the eigenvariance. So this is actually processed by the principal component analysis. So you may re remove the some noisy component, but the, uh, maintain the, you can see over 90% of the variance from the uh, all the border signal, uh, including all the voxels within this VOI. Okay. So you can see there are uh, 54 different voxels right here, and uh, the preserved variance is around 91% right here. Okay. So now you can uh, <coughs> go to the folder, this folder, this uh, output folder you just specified. You can see they also created a meta file right here, named as the VOI underline V1 underline, uh, under, underline 1 right here. This one represents the session 1 right here. Okay. So you can see uh, you can use this to uh, perform the further geo analysis. You need this on hand. Okay. And uh, for the data I provided to you today, <coughs> uh, under this GMM uh, subfolder, you can also see that, that I have already finished all the process and uh, I also extracted the V1, V5, and SPC for you. But you can try to practice, uh, try to practice how to extract uh, uh, one for yourself. How? Great. So now we, we can uh, try to extract another one. For V5, you need to <coughs> Sorry. 
For V5, you need to use the motion contrast. Motion contrast uh, as a target, but you need to use the attention contrast as the inclusive mask. Okay. So now it depends on the hypothesis. Okay. So now I may click the result again, but now I will pick the motion, the motion as the uh, target contrast. But now when SBA asking whether you'd like to apply masking. Please click the second button, the contrast. You can use another contrast result as the mask. So it's kind of the overlapping effect. You want to see the overlapping effect from both motion and attention. Okay. So the PV area right now, again, I don't want to push too much. So I leave uh, 0 0.05 right here. And I use the inclusive. That means the intersect mask. Okay. And the p-value for the uh, adjustment, I again pick the noun and using the 0 0.001 and again I may use the zero fox of the threshold. So now you can see this is the region that actually related to motion and the attentions right here. Okay. So now I will again adjust the, the correct uh, correct point. You may just correct uh, you may adjust the location manually. However, you need to know where is the correct location for the V5. Actually, V5 is located in much more lateral part of the visual cortex. So again, I provided you the recommended coordinates right here. So you can, again, just key in the coordinates right here. OK, so I'm keying minus 36 and uh, minus 87. and um, minus three right here. Okay, so you can see this is the location that will be uh, identified as the V5. So what I'm going to do next is again, click the icon variable button right here. Now I name uh, this VOI as V5. Okay, again, I use these effects of interest to adjust the mean value. I use a sphere with the add millimeter radius right here. So now you can see I uh, I extract the V5 signal as this. Okay. So you can again check the GRM uh, export uh, directory right here. You can see there is a V5 VOI data right here. So finally, I'd like to export the S, uh, SPC region. So you only need to use the attention contrast without any uh, applying mask. <coughs> okay. So let me do this again. Click result. Select SPM, and now I may uh, pick the attention, okay, without any mask, with 0 0.001 p-value, and 0 pixels right here. And now you can see with that uh, plenty region, however, your target is located in the superior parietal cortex right here. So there is the target region you'd like to locate. So again, I, I'm, I'm a key in this coordinate right here. So minus 27, minus, 20, uh, minus 84, 84 right here. And finally, it's 36 right here. OK. So you can see now, or maybe lower part, OK. Not this high, this part, OK. The superior parietal cortex, you may assign this point as the uh, potential VOI. So now click the icon variant. OK, now I may name this VOI as the SPC. And again, use this to correct the mean value. Severe with a millimeter radius. OK, you can now see we can also extract the SP, SPC location right here. OK, so this is the way that we can now have three different VOI data on hand. We are going to use this uh, extracted um, both, uh, both the profile as the uh, basis to calculate the DCM model. Okay. So for the next step, now you can uh, start specifying the DCM model. What you can do is to click uh, the DCM dynamic causal modeling button on the SPM menu right here. There is a huge button right here, dynamic causal modeling. Click one. Once you click this uh, button, you will see there is a pop-up menu uh, showed up. What you can do is you can click this uh, pop-up menu. Then you will see there are several different options that you can do under the DCM function. So 
From the very first point, you need to specify and estimate the potential model that you think uh, may be the correct one. So we start with the start from the backward connection model. If you may recall, we have two different models. We start from the backward connection model right here. Okay, so please follow me. We don't need a page editor right now, so I can use. Okay, I just don't need the page editor anymore. Okay, let me go back here. So now click specify. Okay, again you need to uh, pick uh, an SPM mat file right here. Okay, now you will have the chance to name your model. So I will put MOD BWD represent the backward backward. Okay. And now you need to select the VOIs that potentially will uh, included in this model or the brain regions that will be included in this model. So please select uh, uh, with the same order as I am doing right now. Start from the V1, then V5, then SPC. It actually doesn't matter the order you choose. However, if you want to follow the instruction that I displayed on the slide, you need to follow this kind of order. Otherwise, you may be very careful whether is the new orders for you if you didn't use the same order as I did. Okay, just press it down. And uh, it will ask you what kind of the condition you'd like to include to consider the potential the driving effect or moderatory effect. Okay, so now we are going to include all the effect, including uh, include the photics, yes. Include the motion, yes. Include the attention, yes again. Okay. And now it's the VOI timing. You don't really need to change any anything. Just click enter. The T, you don't need to change anything. Just leave 0.4 as the number. And now it will ask you what kind of the modulatory effects you'd like to model. Okay, just use the bilinear. That is the one that we introduced in the first part. So we use the bilinear model right here. And state per region is one, just one, okay. And sto uh, stochastic effects to click no. Okay. There are some default things I have no time to explain why we choose this one. But if you want to know more, just just try to read the SPM manual. Okay. Okay. Just click no again. And finally, uh, fit time time series or uh, spectrum. Use time course. Okay. Time series right here. And now you will have the chance to specify your model. Now you need to start with the capital A, that is the intrinsic connectivity. So what kind of intrins intrinsic connectivity you will uh, you should have on hand is actually the intrinsic connectivity bi-directional for V1 and V5, and also bi-directional for the V5 and SPC. There is no intrinsic connectivity between V1 and SPC. Again, this is your hypothesis, this is your assumption. Don't ask me why, okay? So now what I'm going to do is I will click just like what I did on the slide, there is no connection between, you can see, there is no connection between SPC and the first column is a V1. Okay. Actually, you should read the, uh, in this order from column to row. This is the order that is defined by SPN. From column to row. Okay, just remember this. This is the fixed or endogenous connection. And the second point, I'm sorry, the, the word is too small, just look at it here. Okay. The second thing is the effect of the photics. What do you think the photics would, uh, would uh, affect uh, your computer? It's kind of the driving effect or modulatory effect. In our model, we think uh, visual sensation is kind of the uh, driving input. So we only click on this one. You can see on this color. This means it's the driving input. Okay, so photics only uh, be the driving input for V1 region, not for others. Click down, and then you can you have a chance to uh, specify the effect of motion. And uh, based on our model, the motion should have the modulatory effect uh, from V1 to V5, right? So now what you are going to do is you can click from V1 to V5. Please be caution. V1 is the first column to V5 is the second row, so you should click on this one. Not click on this one, please. It's very different things because they have the direction information right here. Now it's from one column to another row. So from V1 to second row is a V5 right here, okay. 
And the final one is attention. So again, for the back wall, uh, back wall model, we think the attention may have the modulatory effect from SPC to V5. Okay, so SPC to V5. What I'm going to do, SPC is the third column to V5. So it should be this point. Okay. Then you will see there is a polite thank you to you because you already uh, finish all the model specification. Okay, if you just forget how to click this, you can follow the slide. And then afterward, you need to estimate the model. So again, you need to click the dynamic cost of modeling button again, and then you can click the estimate. And again, we use a time series, so estimate time series right here. Now, you need to select a, an, uh, a DCM model right here. We select the model that we just created right here, okay? So it won't take too long. You can see now the optimization is ongoing. You can see if if the uh, optimization uh, doing pretty well, you can see the uh, the predictive uh, both response will be pretty similar to the actual actual observed both signal right here. So you can see this is the compatibility between observed observed is the dotted line behind this and the uh, line right here, the color line right here is the predicted one. So if you can see they are good correspondence, that means uh, they are doing pretty well. Okay. So now you finished the model specification and the model estimation. What you are going to do right now is to specify another model. Please re remember that we have two different models, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify another model. Now I will I will do it very in a very quick way. Okay. So now I will specify the second model. Again, I select SPN.MAT file. Now my name would be MOD underline FWD means forward model right here. Now again, I need to specify three V1, V5, and SPC VOV, uh, VOI right here. And include voltics, yes. Include motion, include attention with the default value right here, by linear, and one, no, no, and the time series. Okay, just make it quick. So it is, again, the intrinsic connectivity didn't change between two different models. I just click the same thing. And again, the driving input is the same. And then the motion modulatory effect is the same from V1 to V5. The only difference is the attention modulatory effect. It's now actually from V1 to V5, just the same with the uh, motion modulatory effect right here. Okay, so after the uh, model specification, now you can estimate this model. So now I estimate the forward model right here. Again, you will see the optimization progress right here. You may looking forward to again the consistency between the uh, observe the ball signal and the predicted profile right here. Normally, uh, if the model is good enough, normally it will converge, I think, within uh, 30 steps right there. Now it's only cost, uh, it only takes uh, 17 steps right here. So in step four, now you can make the model comparison. Which model is better? Okay, you need some basis, a uh, basis evidence uh, to determine this kind of the question. So right now, what you can do is again, click the DCM. Now you can click a compare. There is a compare option right here. Okay, you will see a batch, uh, batch idea just pop up. What you are going to do is again, you need to select, uh, select uh, the output directory, just select the same one. And then right here, there is a inference the method, oh, you should start from this one, sorry. Data, double click on this, and then click on uh, subject. Now you need to input the model you'd like to compare. So now I select these two model, okay. And then the inference method, we can fix this one, FFX for, uh, for the first level, fix the effects, this one, okay. So I'll just click the, the run batch button. In a very short time, you will see there is a result, or I display this on the uh, slide. You can see for the first one is a log the evidence. Normally, the model, you can see there is a model one and a model two. You need to remember which model is the first one. 
The first one right now is a backward model, another one is the forward model. If we can see the log evidence with a higher higher value, that means you have the strong evidence to claim this is a better model. Again, there is another thing we call the uh, model posterior probability. You can also see that the value close to one, that means you have the stronger confidence to claim this is a better model right here. Okay. So normally, when the uh, log evidence value um, close to 20, you, you definitely will have the strong, strong confidence to claim this is the better model. So based on this kind of the model comparison, uh, you will say these two models forward may be a better one or maybe the optimal one to claim or to investigate what is the modulatory effect from attention. Actually, the, this attention is actually modulate the connectivity between or from V1 to V5. <coughs> so final step is now you can review the result. So again, you can click the DCM button on the SPM, and now you can click review option right here. Review option will allow you to uh, review the result from one of the model. So now I we will pick the forward one because now we tend to believe this one is a better model. And once you select the model, you will see now there are several different options now you can uh, review. I may recommend you, you can view several different things. For example, the input right here. This is the uh, task design that you have on hand, which is the specific onset time or where is the block that uh, uh, we deliver, what kind of the, for example, photic motion or attention uh, stimuli, okay? And then you can click on output Output is actually uh, com uh, for you to compare the estimated or the predicted profile with the observed profile. So you can see for different uh, regions, V1, V5, and SPC, you can see they all have a pretty good consistency between uh, the predicted and observed signals right here. That means you have a high confidence on your model. Okay. Once these two things, you, you just make sure that they are okay, then you can now actually to consider the effects, different effects or different location of the uh, regions right here. For example, right now, if you are uh, interested in photics right here, effect of photic, now you can see this figure. The photic will have the driving effect on V1 directory. And now you can see uh, they have two values right here. The uh, the upper value right here is the probability. If you have the probability close to one, that's definitely the strong, stronger evidence right here. And the, the lower number right here is the effects, the amplitude or the strength of the effects. The unit is hertz, okay, it's hertz. So again, the value, if the value is larger, that means the effect is more stronger, okay. So you can see you have a high competence to say you have a 1.41 hertz effects from the photic stimuli to V1 regions right here, okay? So now you can also review, for example, the motion right here. So as you may recall, motion is focused on uh, the effect con connectivity from V1 to V5. Again, high probability, and uh, the strength is around 0 0.5 uh, hertz right here, okay? The final one is attention. You can switch the attention. Now, the Modulatory effect uh, compared to motion is a little bit lower. Now, you still have a high confidence, but the strength is lower to well, uh, 0.2 hertz right here, okay? You also uh, have the chance to review the fixed connections right here. However, the figure will become so complex because right now you need to consider different connectivity between each. So you, uh, based on this figure, it may be a little hard to uh, take a look. You may using this bar chart to really dig out, uh, for example, the V1 fixed effect uh, to V1 and to different region, for example, to V5, what is the value right here? So you can see there is a negative, negative values right here. So sometimes uh, it's not a guarantee that you always will have the positive effects. Sometimes you may have a negative effects right here, okay. And I think there is one thing that's pretty useful, is the location of regions right here, okay. You can see this is just try to map all the VOI on a 3D brand right here. So you may have a summarized figure. So if you want to see this kind of figure, just click the review and the locations of the uh, regions. I think there's also some 
uh, there's a uh, option for the contrast. If you try to compare different effects, you can use contrast to compare this kind of effect. Okay. So I think that's all for the DCM. I, I, I believe I went through all the process in a very quick way because we don't have sufficient time. But I do leave all the, uh, all the files under the GIM subfolders. So if you want to review the result and uh, you don't have the chance to follow all the steps, you can use the, the, the SPM, SPN domain file under this GLM file, and also you will have the three different VOI files under this GLM. Okay, so today we just walk through um, all the basic ideas behind GLM and also how can we take this kind of the attention modulation for the visual stimuli as the example to perform this kind of the three brain region based uh, DCM analysis right here. Okay, so if you have any questions, just uh, come to me. Otherwise, you can uh, dismiss.